They take care of our machines, irons, phones, and toasters. MP3s and TV screens, even roller coasters. Without them, clocks stop ticking. Without them, lights go out. But if you need a fixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you need a fixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you need a fixie, please don't let their secret out. The Sith. Dad, what time is Mom getting back from her conference? She'll be back in an hour. What surprise can we make for her? Let's bake her buns with raisins in them. They're her favorite. That's a great idea. Ah, uh, where do we keep our recipes? Huh, they're not here. Where could they be? What are you looking for? <gasps> a recipe. They're in the drawer by the stove, over there. Great, thanks a lot. Here they are. That's fantastic. Let's see. What do we need? Milk. Flour. Eggs. Some cinnamon and raisins. The cinnamon's right there. But you're out of raisins. Uh, we're out of raisins. Can we make them without? No, Mom loves them with raisins. Ah, it's too late. The stores are closed. We got cereal! And so? It has raisins, look! Tom Thomas, you're a genius! Why don't you be in charge of the raisins? Tom Thomas, what does Mom use to knead dough? The mixer. How about the mixer? Hmm, not a bad idea. I don't think you have enough raisins. But you haven't made the dough yet. It'll be really quick with the mixer. All right, Dad, we'll see who finishes first. Come on, faster, faster! If you think you're so good, then why don't you help? Fine, we'll help. <laughs> Catch! What's going on in there? We picked everything off the top. We have to dive down. Then dive. Hurry up. Dad's almost done putting the mixer together. Where are the raisins? It's dark. Down there. We can't see any raisins. Well, try diving again. No, this way won't work. We need a filter. In order to separate seeds from the husk, air from dust, and water from harmful particles, we use filters. The simplest kind of filter is a metal netting. These kinds of filters are installed in washing machines and dishwashers. They keep the water clean by capturing small debris and sand. As a result, machines work better and go longer without breaking. In other words, filters help separate what is wanted from what isn't. I think I know what Mom uses. Perfect! That filter's a sieve. Grab the bowl and hold the sieve over it. Pour in the cereal. Now shake it so the tiny flakes fall through the sieve and the raisins stay in it. Dad's turning the mixer on. Then you need to shake faster. Dad, you're spraying the batter all over the kitchen. The mixer's too powerful. The mixer's fine. The batter's too liquid. You have to add flour. Add flour. Oh, right. How do you know all this? Shake it some more. No need. I shook all the flakes through it. Glass. It really worked. Dad! What? Ready to put in the raisins? Look at you! How did you get them all out so fast? By using our sieve, Dad! Do you know the story about Cinderella? Her evil stepmother wouldn't let her go to the ball. Instead, she poured peas into a sack of cinder and ordered Cinderella to pick them all out. But what most people don't know is that it was Fixies who helped her separate the peas from cinder with the help of a sieve. That's right! Cinderella was friends with the Fixies. You can find evidence of Fixies in a number of tales. Don't Tom Thumb or Thumbelina remind you of somebody? 
How did these tiny characters make their way into fairy tales? It's quite possible that long ago, a fixie who wasn't paying attention was spotted by a storyteller. And that became the inspiration for countless tales. All right, you can open your eyes. Ta-da! Oh, beautiful. Whose idea was this? Tom Thomas. Mmm, they're so good. What recipe is this? Tom Thomas found it. And you remembered that I love raisins. Tom Thomas sifted them out of the cereal. Well done, Tom Thomas. All by yourself? Shh. I should say so. Tish! Yeah! No! Yeah! No! Yeah! No! Hey, what a thoughtful conversation you're having there. Been going on for a while? Yeah! No! Simka, please tell Moloch what this is. A present, right? Uh-huh. From Katya. And it's got a secret code right here, you see? <laughs> There's no secret on there. They're just notes. Musical notes. Ha! See? I told you. The squiggles could have been music. I don't believe you. Come on, two people said the very same thing. Simka is not a people. She's a fixie. Anyway, there are two of us. You're ganging up on me. We're not ganging up on you, Nolik. Music is something you can play or listen to with your ears. But that's not all. You can also write it down. When we want to write down words, we use letters. And if we want to write down music, we use special symbols called musical notes. There are seven notes. Do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, and ti. The higher the sound, the higher the note sits on a set of five horizontal lines called a musical staff. Notes that look like this last longer, and notes like this are short, quick notes. Thanks to sheet music, people can read music like reading a book, and then sing or play it. Until I hear you play me what you say is there, I won't believe you. On what? You know that we don't have any instruments. Try using spoons to play it. You think you're being funny? Hey, stop arguing. I know how we can play this song. We can use water. Water? <laughs> Let me get this straight. Are you trying to play the music, or are you trying to wash it? That's right. Pour it in there, Tom Thomas. Some more. Hear how the sound changes? Uh-huh. Stop! Now, start pouring water in this next glass until you hear the note called T. Stop! You got it! Now pour here? Yeah. We still have one note left. And what do I do if my mom comes home? What do I say I'm doing? That you're learning to play music while you're washing the dishes. That's it. That's the high do. Now we have all the notes we need. Do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, and do. Class. Go on, Tom Thomas, play. How about we all play it together? Musical sounds can be produced in a variety of different ways. Violins and cellos are played with a bow. When the bow is rubbed against the string, the string vibrates like it's shivering. And that produces a beautiful sound. A guitar also has strings, but they make sound when they are plucked. And inside a piano are special hammers that hit the strings when the piano player presses down on the keys. Instruments like trumpets, trombones, flutes, and pipes make sound when air is blown through them. That's why they call them wind instruments. There are even instruments that make sound when they are rubbed by a wet finger. Try wetting your finger and carefully moving it around the rim of a wine glass. With a little bit of practice, you'll hear a lovely sound. Well, are you two ready? Yeah! yeah. Great! All together now! I know Happy this! Happy birthday to you! Happy birthday, Tom Thomas! Happy birthday to, to me! Tom Thomas, we also wish.
wish you a happy birthday. You see, Nolik? And you didn't believe that this was music. But I was the first to guess what song it is. Hey, thanks so much for helping me figure out Katya's present. And how about sending a song to Katya? Yeah. We can write down the musical notes to a song about the Fixies. The Fixies? We can't. We can't write down the words. But if it's just the notes there, then it's no problem. Hooray! Want to play it? Of course we do. Sign me up for a class. I'm starting to learn martial arts. Are you gonna fight like in the movies? What do you mean? I'm gonna star in the movies. I'm gonna play a superhero. Yeah! Ah! Ah! He'd be a great windmill for sure. <laughs> Tom Thomas. Is first period free for you tomorrow? Yeah. Excellent. Then in the morning I can take you in for a blood test. A blood test? Why do I need that? to make sure that you're healthy for your martial arts class. And remember, don't eat anything before the test. Don't worry, it's just a little needle. A little what? Mom, and what if I take some other kind of sport, like chess, for instance? Then I don't need a blood test? What's up? Are you scared? No. Mwah. I'm proud of you. Dad never told me I need a blood test. It looks like our superhero's a little scared. I think I'd be too. Blood sounds scary. Nothing scary about it. A human body has a huge number of little tubes called blood vessels with blood flowing through them. The blood carries oxygen and nutrients to the cells, takes away carbon dioxide from them, and protects them from harmful microbes. To be sure if you're healthy or not, it's often necessary to have a blood test. The most accurate results come from blood that is taken from a vein. The sample is analyzed to see if everything is all right. And if not, the doctor will prescribe a treatment. You see, it's totally safe. And there's nothing scary about it. Uh-huh. Oh, blood should only be drawn on an empty stomach. What's that mean? It means no eating before the test. And what happens if I eat? Well, then they won't take any blood from you. Hmm, that's an idea. What's an idea? Um, I got no idea. Okay, good night. You're really not scared at all? Mm-mm. For some reason, I don't believe him. Oh? Huh? Hey, what's going on? You're not allowed to eat! Give it back! Hmm. Oh, my mom's coming! <laughs> oh. Tom Thomas, did you forget? You're not allowed to eat now. Do I have to have this test? Go on. Go get yourself ready. Are you trying to run away? Shh! I thought you wanted to be a superhero. You're being nothing but a coward. I'm not a coward. You are. I'm not. You're acting like one. Anyhow, I'm not going there. Don't even think about it. No, like, help! <laughs> ah! <sighs> Ready to go? All right, Tom Thomas, get up. It's time. Well, thanks a lot. And from now on, we're not friends. Making an accurate blood analysis is not a simple task. Originally, this work was done by people that would examine a drop of blood under a microscope. Today, in modern laboratories, technicians analyze blood with the help of smart analyzing machines. These machines can do the job much faster, and they don't make mistakes like people can. 
After you give some blood to be analyzed, the test tube is sent on a real journey to reach the laboratory for analysis. In the laboratory, it moves from one analyzer to another, each one of them examining a different part of your blood. Then, all of the data is put together, and that's it! The blood test is done. You can get an email when the report is ready and check the results online, so you don't even have to go out to pick it up. Pretty cool, huh? Thanks to you, we just lost our friend. It's because he was being a coward. And if it's my fault at all, it's only a little bit. Fixies! Are you here? We're here. Look what I've got! A certificate for bravery. You had the blood test. And you weren't scared? Uh-uh. Look! Way to go! So, are we friends again? Of course we are. All right. Then can you teach me a few of those moves? Yeah, sure. Wow! Tom Thomas isn't here. There's no way these toy soldiers could have shot it themselves. Now that was a good shot. It wasn't real long, and not high either. And off target. It was pretty awful. It was good, but awful. I got it. So what do we do? We need to raise it up a little higher. Hey, fire, Nolik! Why in the world would you shoot at a Fixie? Fixies? They're supposed to be in school right now. Actually, I'm on my way to school. How about you, Fire? Why aren't you in class? Because there it's totally boring. But here, look at what a cool shooter we found. Ha! <laughs> what did you call it? You've got no idea what this is. It's called a catapult, guys. A cat with gold eyes? <laughs> it isn't a cat with gold eyes. It's a catapult, guys. <laughs> Catapults are ancient propulsion machines. They were used to shoot stones, heavy arrows, or barrels with burning tar. The main part of the catapult is a special piece of rope. It is twisted very, very tightly like a spring. The rope is then wrapped around a big spoon. And then, if you pull the spoon back, put a stone in it, and let it go, the catapult fires a shot. Ooh, and the stone flies far, far away. Uh-huh. All right, so here we go. Ha! Ugh, came up short. What do you mean, short? What are you aiming at? You'll see. The spoon needs to go further back. Just a little. Guys, you're gonna break the glass. <laughs> Nolik, now push. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yes! Right on target. Now let's fly out into space. Wait, what space? What kind of flying? Who's gonna fly? I'm gonna fly. Ha <laughs> ha, right out the window. Right up to the moon. First fixin' onto the world, Nolik. Are you ready for your flight into space? Yes, sir. Nolik, get out of the spoon now. I'll be the first fixie on the moon, yeah. Nolik, enough of this. What kind of joke is this? It's not a joke at all. He's gonna fly into space. And how come it's not you? Because he's lighter. Hold on. Humans didn't go straight into space themselves. They sent dogs out there first. Nah. Chusaka's not gonna fit in here. Simka, why don't you go and let us finish? Fine, I will go. But only after Nolik finds himself a helmet. Hmm, you're right about that. I'll go find a helmet. The catapult was invented in ancient times, but people still use them today. Only now, instead of launching stones, catapults are used to launch jet airplanes. You see, the runway on an aircraft carrier is quite short, so catapults are used to help the planes move fast enough to take off. Catapults can also be used to save the life of a pilot. When an airplane has an accident, a catapult activates in the cabin. The pilot is shot into the sky and comes back to the ground with a parachute. A plain old slingshot is also a kind of catapult. It's just a very little one. 
But be careful with this toy. It can be dangerous to others and to you, too. As for us Fixies, the only time that we use catapults is on a peaceful mission. Pabus, hurry! Our Nolik's getting shot to the moon with a catapult! What? And if I meet new Fixies up there, what should I say to them? Hi there. And you can ask them to launch you back. So? Let's do it! Fire! Launch it! Stop! Don't! Simka! Nolik! I'm not getting out! Ah! Whew! We're alive! Hooray! He flew all the way! Who flew away? To the moon? Nope, just a bit short. It's not our fault. You're just heavier than Nolik, and that's why you came up short. Papus, maybe we can try one more time. What? <sighs> Tom Thomas, what you doing? Nolik, leave me alone. No, really. What is that? Quit distracting me, will you? Nolik, look at what you've done. I? It's all because you wouldn't quit it. Wouldn't quit what? I was struggling with that thing for half an hour and you ruined it. Uh. Whoa. Ah. Uh. Oh. Hey, Tom Thomas, can you hear me? Tom Thomas, let me out. Uh. You banging? Yeah. And how did you end up in there? None of your business. Why are you so rude to me? Cause I feel like it. Oh yeah? Enjoy sitting there. Well, who needs you? Goodbye. What happened to you? Did you bang yourself? And so what? Does it hurt? Leave me alone, Tula. You always have to be fussing over everybody. Come on, why are you so angry, huh? Nolik was rude to me. That means you have to be rude to me? Forgive me, Tula. And where's Nolik right now? There. Let's go see him. Nolik, it's Tula. Are you all right? I'm fine. Why were you so rude with your sister? Because Tom Thomas was rude with me. I get it. It's a chain reaction. A what? <laughs> Setting a log on fire isn't easy. But it's easy to light a match, use the match to light kindling, the kindling to light a twig, and the twig to light the log. Have you ever seen a fire grow? It's an example of a typical chain reaction. So be extra careful with fire. Because just one match or little piece of smoldering coal can lead to a huge disaster. Yes, they can make a whole forest burst into flame and burn down to the ground. And all because of a simple chain reaction. I don't get you. What chain reaction? What do you mean, Nolik? Tom Thomas was rude to you, then you were rude to Simka, then Simka was rude with me. So there it is, a chain reaction. Yeah, and the rudeness was like a little spark. It just spread and spread and spread like a forest fire. Will you forgive me, Simka? Yeah, all right. I've got an idea. Why don't we try starting our very own chain reaction the other way around? What do you mean? Well, instead of spreading angry and rude feelings, we could spread happiness. But how? It's simple. All we need to do is smile and say nice things to each other. What a great idea! We could work together and fix Tom Thomas's mood! And I know how! Come help me pick up this domino, will you? Everything in the whole universe is made up of atoms. Particles so extremely small that you can't even see them through a microscope. But when a tiny atom splits, it makes a tiny explosion. 
And that explosion can start another explosion, and another explosion, and another. And now you've got a chain reaction. And that's how a lot of tiny explosions work together to make the gigantic explosion of an atomic bomb, the deadliest weapon known to man. But atomic energy can also be used for peaceful purposes. For example, nuclear power plants use this energy to produce electricity in hot water. And nuclear-powered icebreakers can break through the thick Arctic ice so ships can sail on their way. They're all done. Nolik, bring them in. Mm -hmm. And now we're going to teach Tom Thomas how a chain reaction can work to make you feel really good. He's coming. On your marks, now. What's going on? No, really? Tom Thomas, watch this. I can't believe what I saw. How did you do that? It was just a real... A chain reaction. What? A chain, chain reaction. reaction. Tom Thomas, when are you going to give me a peek at your new ball? I just can't wait. I told you, you can see it as soon as I hang it up. You're not peeking, are you? No, I'm not. Can I look at it now? Sure, take a look. Which one? This one. <gasps> you broke it! It's okay, don't be sad. I know what to do. <laughs> Tom Thomas, look at that. What for? I looked already. Come on! There's something in there I'm sure you've never seen. Whoa. <laughs> cool, isn't it? What is it? It's my own invention, a pirate kaleidoscope. Glass, right? Uh-huh. It's great. I really like it. Tom Thomas, hi there. I heard that you got a pretty ball to hang on the tree. Shh. Can I see it? It's right there. Where? There. Why'd you do that, Simka? Come on now, I just cheered him up. How? Tell me. With the kaleidoscope, remember what Grandpa's taught us? Do you know what makes a kaleidoscope have such beautiful patterns? Ah, it's because pieces of multicolored glass are tumbling around in there. And it's also because it has mirrors inside. Usually there are three of them, and they are arranged facing each other. That way, each piece of glass makes many, many reflections that create the kaleidoscope's beautiful symmetrical patterns. By the way, you can put just about anything you want inside a kaleidoscope, and each different thing makes its own special pattern. Yes, there are all kinds of kaleidoscopes. Some with buttons inside, some with flowers, and even some that are filled with insects. Once, a very rich man had a kaleidoscope made with precious stones inside. <laughs> yeah, it probably wouldn't have been nearly as beautiful if he had just filled it up with money. Tom Thomas, look inside the kaleidoscope. I already saw it. It's pirates. Nah, it's not about pirates. We changed it. Go on, look and see. Wow. You like it? A lot. Hey, what did you put in there? A few pieces of the ball that you smashed. It's even better for Christmas, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Ah, uh, that didn't work at all. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas! We came to take a look at that splendid Shh. new Christmas oh, What's what? wrong? Ugh, don't even ask us that. I've got it! Tom Thomas! What? Look inside the kaleidoscope! Again? I don't want to. And I'm telling you, you've got to. Fine. Cool, yeah! Merry Christmas! 
thanks so much. Now, don't you feel good again? Yeah, it's really something. And you're the first human in the world that's ever seen it. How about that? Turn it! It's great, isn't it? Wondrous designs that tickle the eye in the kaleidoscope. Shimmering seams, gingerbread trees in the kaleidoscope. Magical flowers just blooming with light. Everybody. Tom Thomas, I came to look for myself at that beautiful Christmas. Shh. It's okay. What's more important? Having such awesome friends or some ball hanging from a tree? We're gonna be late. We'll make it. I'm a super duper racer. <laughs> well, well, fire. Again, risking your life. <laughs> and super racers like me can always count on luck. You know, fire, counting on good luck is stupid. It would be better if you would keep your mind on safety. Actually, today, Professor Eugenius has something really special to show us. He's going to be testing an airbag. Uh, what's that? Ditch it. Explain it. Everybody riding in a car has to wear their seatbelt, because if the car has to stop quickly, the belt will hold the person back. But there are times when even seatbelts don't give enough protection, like when a fast-moving car crashes into something. When that happens, the driver and passengers can be protected by an airbag. You can't see them when they're folded up because they're hidden. But if the car is in a crash, the airbags blow up very quickly. And the person bumps into the bag instead of bagging into the steering wheel or flying through the windshield. Here I come. And once again, when something dangerous must be tested, Professor Eugenius tests it on himself. But, Grampus, aren't you scared that it won't blow up with air? Don't worry about the air. A three, and a two, and a one. The airbag filled up in an instant. Did you notice? Yeah, but how does it do it? There is a chemical inside of there that quickly burns and instantly turns into a gas the moment the crash takes place. The gas fills the airbag, and there you go. Did I explain that right, Professor? Uh, we've got to get him out. Stop! We'd better call for help. <laughs> Professor, do you need some help? <laughs> Thank you, Elisa. Sorry to take you from your work. <laughs> You're free to go. Professor, how did you manage to press the button from way over there? Uh, I managed to hit it on the fly. You are just astounding. To keep small children safe while they're riding in a car, they must be buckled up with a seatbelt inside of a special booster chair. But kids also need to be careful when they're riding a bicycle, skateboarding, roller skating, riding a scooter. 
First of all, it's best to keep off of roads where there's too much traffic. Second, put your protective gear on. For your arms and legs, wear elbow pads, gloves, and knee pads. For your head, wear a helmet. That way, if you fall down, you won't get badly hurt. And third, make sure that people can see you. If you're out riding in the evening, your clothes and bike must have safety reflectors on them. They let drivers see where you are by reflecting the light from their headlights back at them. Remember, better safe than sorry. Here we go. Well, I hope this time I've got it. Should we call his assistant right now, just in case? Let's just wait and see. Ready, set, go! Grampus, he needs to be rescued. Uh, no need. I made a change to it. Now the bag not only inflates automatically, it deflates itself as well. Splendid! As you fixie say, Tish! Today's lesson is done. Where's my fixie board? I've got your fixie board, Fire. Here you go. I just went and equipped it with an airbag. Really? Ha! How come? You know I'm a super racer. See? Woohoo! And that's why I installed it. Super racers don't need airbags. We never, never, ever, ever. <laughs> Cool or what? It's a very original design he used there. That design is my own, and Fire ran the test. Professor, will you make an airbag for each one of us? You all will get them real soon, but even so. Caution and care make accidents rare. <laughs> Tell anyone? Nobody. We promise. Uh, are you gonna open that thing or not? Huh. There's nothing there. Hmm. Is this a joke or something? Maybe she didn't feel like writing you anything. Then why would she put a note in there? Wait a second. And what if she wrote that letter with a special kind of invisible ink? Wow, I've never heard of it. If you want to keep what's written in a letter secret, you can write it with a special liquid called invisible ink or security ink. You can make invisible ink yourself by mixing lemon juice, milk, or baking soda with water. Then just dip a stick or a brush in it and write on a plain piece of paper like this. You can't see anything, right? To make the invisible ink visible again, the paper needs to be warmed up with something like an iron. But that's a secret. Well, Simka, you might be right. Only what about the iron? I can't use it. But your mom can, and right now she's doing the ironing. Yeah? Well, that changes everything. Hold on! If that really is a secret letter, then no one should be allowed to see it. Even your mother. What can I do then? Ah, I know what. Mom, can you iron my shirt too, please, will ya? What's wrong with it? There's nothing wrong, it's just that the pocket's wrinkled. Ah, sure, I'll do it. Since when did you start worrying about things like this? All done. Thanks, Mom. <sighs> that should do it. What? What is it? Huh? Tom Thomas, I really like you. <laughs> Katya. Katya is in love with you, isn't she? And what about you? Do you like her? Uh, I don't know. She does get straight A's. You like her. <laughs> you and Katya kissing in a tree. K.I. No, like, stop. 
stop your teasing. Well, are you gonna write her back? You think I should? Of course, silly. I'm scared that someone will see it. Then why don't you write it with invisible ink, like she did? Yeah, go get a lemon. Nowadays, it isn't very common for people to write letters by hand and send them by regular mail. Today, people mostly send letters through the Internet. But even electronic letters should be written with some of the same simple rules of politeness used in handwritten letters. For instance, you need to write a greeting at the beginning of your letter, and a few kind words at the end are always appreciated. Something like hugs and kisses, or all the best, or see you soon. And before you send off your letter, it's best to read it through, to check for any mistakes. And one more thing. If you receive a message from someone, don't take too long to answer them, because they might think that you'd forgotten about them, and that can hurt their feelings. To say it simply, when you write, be polite. Go on, write. And what should I write? Come on, tell the truth. Just write this. Forgive me, Katya. Only there's another girl I really like. My one and only Simka. Mm. No lick! If you don't like it, then why don't you think it up? Tom Thomas, just go ahead and write how you feel deep down in your heart for Katya. Katya, I like you too. Like that? Is that all I have to write? Would that be okay? It's lovely. K-I-S-S-I. Just sip it, will ya? Tom Thomas, is that everything? And did you make sure to check that you didn't make any mistakes? No, but I'll check right now. Huh, all the words disappeared. Well, if there's something wrong, only Katya will find it. Tom Thomas, huh? why are you sitting in the dark? Because it looks better this way. Check it out. Oh, oh look at that. What a beautiful castle this is. It's like out of a fairy tale. No, it's from my construction set. I put it together myself. Class. Oh, let's be knights. I love that game. And so does the old dragon. Who locked the fair princess inside of the castle? I get to be the princess. <laughs> Look like a knight. You don't even have armor. Armor. Wait, hang on a second. A construction set lets you build lots of different things from a set of parts. Put them together like this, you've got a house. Like this, a car. Or like this, a spaceship. The parts might be made of metal and connected with screws. Some construction sets have plastic parts you click together. Other sets are models where the pieces are glued together. You can also find magnetic sets. Touch the parts together, and magnetic attraction makes them stick. Beware, dragon! Oh, save me! Oh, help me! Hmm, where's that knight already? And where's the castle? The planet has been attacked by robots! And they have destroyed the castle! And they've kidnapped me! And are you still a princess? Of course I'm still a princess. Oh, save me, brave knight! Right! <laughs> What's going on? This is a magnetic construction set, and your armor is made out of metal, so you got attracted to the magnets. <laughs> Tom Thomas, it's not fair! Unattract me! <laughs> okay. Oh, rescue me! Help me! You gotta save me! Hang in there! I'll be right back! I gotta change my costume!
now only a brave knight. I already did the knight. Well, you gotta be him one more time. All right, but this is the last time. And don't change anything. Simka, stay right there. And don't even think about running away. And so it goes. Everyone's abandoned the poor princess. Oh. Simka's my older sister. That's why she thinks it's okay to get bossy with me. But I don't let it get to me, because she's very smart and a quick thinker. She knows gadgets better than just about anybody. It's always interesting with Simka. And she's really smart, too. She gets nothing but A's at school. Everyone in our class loves her. Only she and Verda don't get along too well. It's because of fire. Well, you get it. Sometimes Simka can be way too strict with me. You can't do this. You shouldn't do that. But if an exciting adventure comes along, she's always right there with us. Simka's brave. She's got the skills. Yeah, she's always ready to take on a challenge. I've got an awesome sister. But just keep that between us. Because if you tell her, it might go to her head. How long am I supposed to sit here? Hey, anyone? Hey! Saka, you give that back. Leave, leave this room. Are you okay? I can't leave you alone for a minute. Yeah, I think we're okay. Nola got here and saved me from Chusaka for real. Just like a real live knight. Oh, come on, pretty knight. I'm not kidding. You deserve to be one. And to protect every living creature from pesky Chusakas everywhere. I promise. <laughs> to be a knight, Sir Nola. Hooray, hooray, hooray! Kitty! <laughs> And a hundred and one, a hundred and two, a hundred and three, a hundred and four, oh, and a hundred and... No, Lick! Hey, come on! Tom Tom has promised to give me a ride outside on his bicycle. I gotta get going. Lucky you. I'd love to ride on a bike. Yeah, it would be a lot of fun. You're not allowed to go. Why can't we? Tom Thomas isn't your friend, all right? He only invited me. If you want to take a ride on a bicycle, then go find your own human friend to invite you. Well, Tom Thomas, you ready to go? We can't. There's no way we can ride this. The tire's got a hole. I try to fill it, but the air comes out. Well, then what should we do? I thought you'd know what. You're the fixie here. We, I mean, I didn't study it yet. Hang on! Tula, did you? Wait a sec. We found a hole in one of the tires of the bicycle. Hmm. You mean the one that only gives rides to friends? Don't be like that. Please help me out. I thought Tom Thomas was only a friend of yours. Uh, why don't you go and ask him yourself? He could be your friend, too. <laughs> For thousands of years, wheels have been helping people all over the world. The wheel's ancestor is a lock. People would put logs under heavy loads to move them. Then people came up with the idea of slicing the log and connecting the slices with an axle. And there it was, the wheel. Wheels made life more convenient. Later came wheels with spokes, metal rims, and rubber tires. Soon people were wheeling around the world in and on all sorts of vehicles. Potters, mills, clocks. There are just so many different uses for a wheel. And with the steam train, steamboat, and cars, wheels spread all over the world. They even reach the planet Mars. The wheel really is one of the simplest and yet most amazing of all human inventions. Whew, it's off. So what's next? Now you take out the inner tube. You mean this rubber thing? Yeah, that's your inner tube. There's a hole there somewhere. Pump it up, Tom Thomas. Then we can see where the air is coming out. <laughs> that's not a good way to find the hole, Nolik. Why isn't it good? Because the hole might be really tiny. Then how do you find it? 
to find it, we need water. How come? Yeah, how come? Now I get why we need water. There! See those tiny bubbles? Yeah, do you see them? That's the air from inside of the tube. That means the hole is right there. Nolik, you're a genius. Hooray! Here's the hole I found. Look! Will you let me put on the glue? In my pack -a mat I have just the right kind for this. The hole is right here, right where I found it. But first, we have to make sure that the rubber is dry. Looks like it's dry. Then let's put the glue on. It's all fixed. Finish! All right, it's ready to go. Hooray! Digit Tula, you coming with us? I don't know. We weren't invited. I'm sure he'll invite you. Right, Tom Thomas? Of course I will. We're friends, aren't we? Katya? Uh, hi. What are you doing here? Katya came to pick up something for her mom. I need a little more time. Can you wait here? Yes, of course. I'd be happy to. We can play a game. Hmm. Only just not hockey. I never understood why boys are so crazy about it. I'm baffled by it, too. Oh, the Fixies are here. Hi, guys. Hi, hi there. there. Even though you clearly don't get hockey, I'm sorry. We're finishing this game. And after that, my dad and I are going to go and see a real hockey game at the arena. I'm sure that a real game is just as boring. You're wrong. <laughs> hockey is an incredibly interesting game, but it isn't easy. A player needs so many different skills, like skating very fast, stopping quickly, dodging the opposing players, controlling his stick, and shooting the puck into the goal. <laughs> And there's no way to do all of that without science. For instance, to calculate how hard to hit the puck or how quickly to stop. Hockey players learn all about that during their practices. They put on their protective gear and go for it. And that's not all. Hockey players also have to be brave and nimble. Otherwise, they might find themselves unable to stop and crashing into the boards or taking a puck to the head. Ow! But as the saying goes, hockey is not for cowards. Tidish! Go! What are you waiting for? Katya, you just made me miss that. I'm sorry. I happen to be helping you, if you didn't notice. You said you don't like hockey, so quit giving me advice. Hmm, whatever. That was 
was my second goal from that spot over there. You lucked out. Uh-huh, sure did. He'll have less luck if you keep this player back. And that one needs to pass off the boards. Get your goal. Before she said she didn't know anything about hockey. So are we playing or not? Attack and check, don't lose control. A line change on the fly. The puck is zooming towards the goal to score and break the tie. It's one for all and all for one. Great teamwork is a must. Let's go and show them how it's done. This game was made for us. Hockey's our game. Hockey. Hockey's our game. Hockey. Hockey's our game. if it hadn't been for Katya. But the winning goal was mine. Tom Thomas, it's time for the game. Ready to get going? Katya, I'll take you home. Oh, um, could I go with you to see the hockey? I never realized it's such a great game. Hey, you know what? Why don't we go to the game together? Maybe I'll like it too. Great, it's about time. Let's go. Great team? Well, Tom Thomas has his own team now. And not only that, they don't give up. It's not that. It was beginner's luck. 